Hello and welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today we're going to show you how to break your Marvel Champions deck into 11 cards that you need to make a decision on. Because here's the thing. I'm making this video for someone like myself, not like Dale the Casual Gamer who is... I'd say neck deep in Marvel Champions at this point. I've played it for a while. Link down below if you want to be connected to a larger Marvel Champions community. But for someone like myself that loves this game but is intimidated by the fact that it's a deck construction game, which means before you even start playing, you have to go through, can you pull one of those over here? A pile of cards, expansions, upgrades, and potential combinations to figure out what character you're going to be playing as. But... Dale has been my solution to this, and genuinely the reason why I've been able to play Marvel Champions solo, cooperative, across the board. And it's because the first time we hung out, mm -hmm. I asked you how you build a deck, and you broke it down in a way that made me realize that there's really 11 cards and only one color of deck I need to be concerned with. So, in this video, we're going to share that information with you. Uh, Dale, could you give us 30 seconds on what Marvel Champions is, and then let's start the deck construction process. Yeah, so it's a living card game that you can play one to four players. You're playing as superheroes, you take on the villains, you construct a deck before the game, and then you go into it and you're trying to defeat your villain, stop it from scheming out or before it defeats you. Yeah. So the first decision you're going to have to make is which hero you want to play, because that's going to set up 15 of the cards in your deck. Right. And there's a whole slew of heroes that you could choose from, but this pile here is your standard intro deck. So we've already knocked off a whole pile of them. Yeah, so you need a minimum of 40 cards, max of 50, and choosing your hero gets you 15 cards to start with. Now, most people advise not going over that 40 limit. Right? right. You could go to 50 if you want, if you have a real reason to squeeze, but honestly, the deck utility and being able to cycle through your deck as efficiently as possible advocates for a tight deck anyway. Right. So we're, we're saying build a 40 card deck if you're able to. The next thing we're going to be adding in is going to be three cards. These are a strength, energy, and genius. Why are we always pulling these into our decks? These are, most cards only give you one resource. These three cards give you two points. Basically, to play a card, you're playing other cards to put them into play. So these yep. are just a good way to get double for your money. And then with each aspect you can choose from, there's four aspects. They usually have a card that uh, is a power of whether it's justice, aggression, protection, or leadership that gives you one resource. But if you play for it for that aspect, for so if I'm playing justice, for a yellow card, it counts as two resources. Now, when it comes to aspects, you could choose any aspect you want. And like you said, there's four of them, mm -hmm. right? And so that's a decision you have to make. Most cards will lean heavily, or most decks will lean heavily towards one or another aspect. But in this case, like with Spider-Man, we decided to go with a yellow aspect, with his justice aspect. Right. Uh, so this is gonna be the same. So we just added another five cards into our deck. Now, you also always pull a helicopter, a downtime, and an endurance into your deck that you're building, which is another three cards. Why Why these three cards? Um, Helicarrier is a card that lets you, once you get it in play, hopefully you get it in early, you can exhaust it to make your next card cheaper. Mm. So it's a good resource card that's always gonna be in play for you later in the game. And these other two, I know some people aren't the happiest with, but they have saved me before. Downtown, downtime lets you get plus two to your recovery. Spider-Man may not need it, but for most of the decks I build, I put it in there. Um, so instead of him recovering for three, if this card's in play, he recovers for five. Which means you're healing for a little bit more. Right, and the Endurance card gives you an additional three hit points, which if you come in with 10 health, there are some villains out there that can hit you a lot for a one cost card. It gives you three additional hit points. With 10 health, that's a 30% bump, which is pretty big. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so from that point, we're going to be looking towards actually building our deck. But I promised you, you'd only have to worry about 11 cards. And you can iterate on this next part going forward. Honestly, any of it, but it'd be best advised not to. <laughs> Here we're going to start mixing in our actual aspect cards or potentially some of our more basic cards. Yep. We're looking for allies. You're going to be looking for six allies, all with a cost of two to three. Why is that? I do that. Uh, I like a low curve and what that means is you're putting cards 
you don't need that many resources. So a lot of times if you have high cost cards, you might only play one card a turn. Going with low cost cards gives you the potential to put two cards out in play mm. in one turn. And just six has been the number that comes to me for allies, because allies come in, they attack or thwart, and they're there to defend for you later if needed, needed to, or you can attack or thwart with them again and maybe have them another turn. So usually I just go through the cards I have, find six allies with a cost of two or three, and just put them out there, so then. If you want to get more nuanced, you can double check the special abilities stats, but all of them are designed to be helpful to you in one way or another. So min-maxing it may or may not be important depending on what scenario you're playing. Right. Now, why do you go for aspect-specific allies as opposed to some of the basic allies? Uh, just the power of justice. I know that's exactly. gonna help me out a little bit better because if you start getting too many basic cards in your set, then you might want to start thinking, well, I'm not gonna use these two cards. Yep. So making the most out of the cards that you already took that give you extra resource, which maximizes your ability to play those cost two or three ally cards. So now we've added six ally cards, three of these, five of these standard always include resource cards, 15 of our hero cards along with our main hero card. We're down to... Yes, we need 11 cards. So now you're gonna be narrowing it down to your aspect specifically, which is the stack of cards we have here. You made the decision way at the beginning if you wanted to play protective, aggressive, if you want to be a justice fighter, and all of those have their different flavors. And playing standard Marvel Champions will kind of walk you through that. And we're not gonna break down, well actually, what are the four aspects and how do they play? Uh, basically for justice, that's going to help you stop the villain scheme from going off, so you're removing the threat he's putting out there, so that's what that specializes in. Aggression is dealing damage, taking care of the minions, hitting the villain, to, that's the, your end game. Um, your leadership is more of a, it, it's helping or boosting yourself or your other players, so it's going to put out cards to make your minions, other, well I'm sorry, your allies or your other players' allies do better and boost hero abilities, and then protection does just that. There's some healing in there, there's cards out there that takes the damage instead of other people, so it's another support type aspect. So we're down to 11 cards. You've already chosen what version of the character you want to play from those four categories, so you're going to start cycling through these aspect decks, looking for cards that you think will help the type of character that you want to build or the scenario you're going up against. For instance, if you've lost once because scheming was out of control, maybe you want to take a scheming heavy deck or an attack focused deck if you find that the minions are more powerful than you were prepared for. Now, one thing that I noticed as you built out this deck that we have in front of us, you took from those 11 cards, a whole collection of them are sets of two or threes. Why right. is that? Um, for me, I like to target on what I want to do. If my job is to take out threats, I'm gonna take all three cards that do something powerful. So like I took three or for justice. So even though we have 11 cards, they're not going to be 11 specific or different mm. cards. So I've got three for justice, three clear the areas. And I broke these up because they, uh, once you play for a while, Agent Colson lets you search for cards. So cards that let you search. I put in two cards that if I play him, can go search for these two cards. And if we just lost the last game because of threat, I've put in an extra card to remove more threat and another card to uh, make the threat value of your scheme go higher. So really, you're, you're boiling it down to like six cards total that you're being nuanced about. A few of those are duplicates and yep. one or two of those are changing because you're iterating on a deck that you'd already constructed or built, trying to learn from kind of the past decisions that you've made. Yep. That's how simple it is. And, and trust me, I, I know, I, I'm also the type of person <laughs> that is intimidated by games that give me a crate of cards to go through. But I don't need to know all those cards. In fact, when you first start playing, you probably won't have all those cards. These cards start coming with expansions and mm -hmm. adaptations, new versions of the game, new heroes that mix in their own little personal traits into every deck. And as you play and kind of expand upon the game that you're learning, you'll get to know the cards better and better. The first time you build a deck, you probably will still read through an entire set of all the aspects. Yeah, the best which, thing to do is just take the pre-con deck, play it, see how it works, and then go, 
I don't think this card did much for me. Yeah. Take that out, replace it with something. Start there. And then once you tear the whole thing down, then you can start doing something like this. So Yeah. But that's the concept. And, and really, truly, once you learn how to deck construct in Marvel Champions, you'll get the most out of the game if you can get past that barrier. So once more, and I'll leave a, a link down below or a tag down below letting you know what this is. But you're looking for one hero with 15 core cards, three basic cards, which are going to be your uh, genius, energy, and strength. Then you're deciding what aspect you want to take, and you're always going to be taking the power of from that aspect selection. From your general cards, you're looking for a helicarrier, a downtime, and an endurance. You're looking for six ally cards with a cost range of two to three until you're more experienced with the game and you decide to make tactical decisions about the abilities that they have or which ones are your favorite to play with. And then you're looking for really 11 cards with some variations and duplicates mixed into that that supplement or work off of the hero that you've chosen. The best way to learn that is, of course, grab a few cards, shove them into a deck, play a scenario, and figure out what you did it and didn't use, like what you always use as a resource, and start changing the way that you play Marvel Champions. And with that, we're going to go build a deck and start a campaign. And I'm so darn excited. <laughs> if you watch this point, Hit the link down below, swing over, check out what Dale does over on his channel. Uh, really, my love for Marvel Champions can largely be blamed to him. And I will be sending him an invoice for the record. It's not a cheap game. <laughs> True story. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.